Hello, my citizens of the world. I'm Yes or No, and today we are talking about whether or not PC culture has killed comedy. Yes. No, I'm just kidding. This is so interesting to me, right? Because I'm so gung ho about like civil rights and human equality and compassion. Oh dear, I cannot tease you about that. But I also like so desperately love to laugh. What a shame, for I dearly love to laugh. I actually grew up watching a lot of stand-up as a kid, right? I don't know if you guys know that show Comedy Central Presents, but I used to watch it every single day after high school for like an hour or two. When you watch that much comedy, you start to become super aware of the patterns in certain types of jokes, and you also become hyper aware of which jokes leave like a bad taste in your mouth. Like, hmm. Oh, that... That tasted like a low-hanging fruit. No, but it's so interesting because so many comedians go for those easy, easy tropes, right? The sexist tropes, homophobic, racist, you name it. You know, and I don't think it's because these comedians genuinely believe it. I think they do it because these jokes are super easy and traditionally this is been what's gotten the most laughs, right? And so it's just like an easy cop-out. It's lazy joke writing. And I know a thing or two about lazy joke writing. Yeah. No, but there, there are two things I hate about stereotypical types of jokes, right? And the first one is, is that they're boring, right? Like we've seen it done over and over again in like a thousand different ways. But the second thing I hate about stereotypical joke writing is that it enables people to hold these very unkind views against people who have systematically been oppressed for nothing other than something that they were born with. But that's also why I'm not a huge fan of this new PC culture comedy where they make jokes against white guys because it's like, also that is totally overdone. And two, it's like fighting fire with fire. WWSBD, what would Smokey the Bear do? <laughs> and he would, he would never fight fire <laughs> with fire. You know what, screw it. Maybe we do need discriminatory jokes because these jokes suck. <laughs> no, but I kind of feel like audiences losing their taste for this racist, sexist type of humor is sort of like when adults lose their taste for like sugar and saturated fats. Right? It doesn't mean that they don't still want tasty food. It just means that they no longer want to go for the cheap stuff. Think Michelin star macaroni as opposed to Kraft. And I realize I just lost a lot of dedicated Kraft fans <laughs> on that last analogy. <laughs> Please don't unsubscribe. And so essentially audiences are maturing a little bit and being like, hey, we don't really like laughing at jokes that rely on disparaging large groups of people who already have it kind of bad, right? And like those kind of jokes, similar to junk food, make them feel sick. I mean, not really sick, maybe sick. It makes us feel kind of gross, right? Which is understandable. But at the same time, comedians who have built their careers off of this type of humor now feel kind of like, at odds with the audience, right? Because they're like, you guys, this stuff is funny. Remember, you used to laugh at this stuff. It feels like probably to them a little bit like a betrayal, but also secretly, I've got to imagine they sort of feel a little sad because nobody wants to laugh at their jokes, the same jokes they used to. What happens to a child when they feel sad? Well, they lash out, right? They start whining about how they don't want to go to college campuses, or about how PC culture has killed comedy. You gotta give them props because at least the irony there is hilarious. Right? Like, isn't it ironic that they are criticizing critical culture <laughs> for criticizing? <laughs> and it's funny, so they're both critical, but PC culture is criticizing stuff that works against human equality and comedy culture is critical of things that work against laughs and it's like, one has a stronger argument, at least for this point in this context of history. But I digress. I mean, basically what we have now is just comedians being a little touchy over the fact that their comedy isn't mainstream anymore. But it's like, dude, their comedy still has a place in the world. It just, it has a place in a specific niche of people who want to fill their minds with like these unhealthy kind of thoughts. People just don't want the cheap Hershey's jokes anymore. They want the lint. They want the gosh darn Godiva. The gosh darn Godiva. But notice that right there. It's, it's not that we get rid of junk completely. It's not like PC culture has said, no more chocolate. All chocolate is bad for you. No, we're saying, you can have chocolate, it's just gotta be a finer type. 
right? We're not saying get rid of the sexist jokes. We're not saying get rid of the discriminatory jokes. We're basically just saying if you make one of those jokes, it better be a damn good joke. It's so funny that you get the people to laugh at themselves, right? The bar has been raised. But how cool is that, right? Because comedy has always been about knocking up against taboos. But it's like, we have now shifted the taboo in a super cool way. Like, taboos used to be these things that were kind of relatively harmless, like, oh, I said the F word on cable television, or, oh, I talked about nudity. <laughs> Let's laugh. But now it's like, instead, we're actually putting the taboo where the taboo kind of should be, which is on these things that are actually harmful. It's harmful to ascribe a trait to a certain group of people just because they all share another trait in common, right? Something that they were born with. And you know, so PC culture hasn't killed comedy. It's just shifted where its uh -uh zones are, right? <laughs> and it's like, the only time PC culture will actually kill comedy is when we all become so open and so okay with everything that there's nothing surprises us anymore, right? There's no more tension. And so instead, we've just made it easier for comedians to do the type of humor that doesn't actually hurt people, and we've made it harder for them to do the type that does. If they want to touch on the taboo stuff, then they just have to be super funny. Like, incredibly funny. And usually, if you're gonna walk up against an actual taboo, you have to be incredibly intelligent, both in the IQ sense and in the emotionally intelligent sense, right? And those types of comedians usually tend to have more empathy too. So when they walk towards that type of humor, they can tiptoe around it in a way that is so beautifully done and ends up not offending the same people who happen to be the butt of the joke. Right, you see this all the time in Dave Chappelle's humor and also in like South Park's humor, for example. And that's how they get away with these massively like offensive sayings while still like somehow not offending. And it's interesting because I used to see this in like my family situation, right? So like my brother is one of the funniest people I know, right? And he always used to make jokes at my expense. But because I knew he loved me, I was like, this is hilarious and I would laugh along. But I'm sure we've all had people in our lives who have made jokes at our expense and instead of being like, oh my god, that's so funny, we're like, oh, that kind of hurt, right? And when somebody's telling a joke that makes you feel like, oh, that kind of hurt, that's no longer a joke, right? And if you tell them that and they continue doing it, now it's bullying, right? So basically PC culture is being like, hey, 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 no more bullying. PC culture is basically saying, hey, the standard has been raised, right? If a joke could be interpreted as ambiguous, then it's on the comedian's shoulders to be funnier. It's not for the audience to have thicker skin, right? The comedian is entitled to telling the joke, but they are not entitled to the laugh. And so I actually think that what PC culture is putting in place is a great failsafe for, you know, not just creating a better culture where we all have our rights protected, but it's also like pushing comedy to be better too. Like to be funnier, to be more clever. I'm just so excited. <laughs> and mostly selfishly because I'm going tonight to a comedy club. But hey, most of the things I say are selfish. <laughs> Speaking of which, if you would like to donate to my Patreon, you can do so down below. Or if you'd like to go watch more of my videos, feel, feel, feel free to do that. Bye now.